Welcome to Stories with Joyce Slater, and we are here for the love of animals. Oh, I know all of you love animals. I bet some of you even have pets. Do you have a dog? Do you have a cat? What do you have? I have two dogs. I have Peanut and I have Gracie. Yeah, they're both girls. And we love our dogs. One is a pug and one is a beagle. Now, people have all kinds of pets. I have heard of people even having snakes as pets. And ducks. And alligators. Even a goat. So today, we are going to tell some stories about all different kinds of pets. Now, my first story, there is a pet in it, but it starts out with a little mouse named Mabella. Mabella was a clever, clever little mouse. She was so clever, but her father taught her a lot. One day, he said to her, Mabella, Mabella, when you are out, Keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. Listen to what comes out of your own mouth. And if you are in trouble, run. Well, Mabella listened to her father all the time, but you know how we listen to our parents. Sometimes we listen to every word and sometimes we don't. Ma Bella was playing with all of her friends. All of the mice were all around. They were jumping rope. They were singing. They were playing games. When who should come up but a cat? Now, this cat belonged to one of the neighbors. It was a pet of one of the neighbors. And the cat, well, all of the mice saw the cat and they all backed up and they all hid and they were shivering and shaking because cats eat mice. And the cat said, oh, don't worry about me. I'm not going to eat you. Why, I've come over to invite you to my house for a party. We will have food. We will have music. We will even have games. Tomorrow at three o'clock, come over to my house. And he left. And they all looked at each other and they all thought, Hmm, do you think it would be okay to go to a cat's house for a party? Well, they talked about it and they decided they would go. <clears throat> The next day, they all gathered together, and they walked down the street, and they came to the cat's house. They knew exactly where he lived. They knocked on the door, and the cat opened the door and let them in. Oh, my goodness. He said, welcome, welcome. He fed them all kinds of goodies. And they sang songs, and then he said, I'm going to teach you a game. So I said, now in this game, there is a song, and it's a marching game. So we have to stand in a line. Mabella, you stand at the beginning of the line, he said. And every mouse stands right behind the other. I'll stand at the end. <clears throat> so. They started marching, and he, he started singing this song, teaching them. The song goes like this. When we are marching, we never look back. The cat is at the end, fo, fin, fo, fin. Well, the mice learned the song really easily. And they got in line, Mabella first and all the mice behind her, and they were marching along. When we are marching, we never look back. 
the cat is at the end, full fin, full fin. Well, they never looked back to see what the cat was doing. Every time they sang the song, the cat would snatch one of the mice and hide it. Well, pretty soon, Ma Bella started thinking, it doesn't sound like all the mice are singing. She listened very carefully, and she could only hear a couple of them singing. When we are marching, we never look back. The cat is at the end, full fin, full fin. She said, I hear even less now. Well, suddenly she realized she was the only one singing. She turned around just in time because the cat was about to snatch her. And she remembered one thing her father said. Run. She ran. She ran around that room and around that room and around that room. And then she saw all of her friends stuck in little hiding places. So as she ran, she would free them from their hiding places and they all started to run. And when she had freed all of them, they ran towards the front door and out the door they went. They ran down the street and they ran home. And when she got there, they were all exhausted. She said, I am so glad I listened to what my father said. I'm going to teach you how to be clever mice. And so they all gathered around and she said, Always keep your eyes open when you are out. And when you are out, always keep your ears open. And when you are out, always listen to what you say. And when you are in trouble, run! And so that day, Ma Bella taught all of her friends how to be clever mice. And you know, they were so clever that they were never tripped by that cat again. And that is the story about Ma Bella, the clever mouse. You know, we can all be very clever and remember those same things when we're out. We always keep our eyes open and look around. We always listen to everything that's going on, even what's coming out of our own mouth. Remember, she was saying the cat was at the end, yes. And then, if we're in trouble, run. All right. You were very good listeners. Thank you for listening to that story. Now I'd like to tell you a story about a little old couple who had three pets. Can you count them? One, two, three. Once upon a time, there was a little old man and a little old woman. They lived in a little old house. They had three pets. They had a duck, they had a goat, and they had a pig. Three pets. Now their house was so little that they couldn't fit their pets in their house. So they built a little house for the duck and a medium house for the goat and a big house for the pig. One day the little old man was in the woods. He was chopping down wood. He had an idea. Boing. He ran home and he said to his wife, I have a great idea. Let's live in the woods. He said, she said, I don't know. We don't have a house in the woods. He said, I will build us a house in the woods. So They gathered up all of their things and they had a great big cart and they put all of their furniture in the cart 
And they put their three pets in the cart. What are they? The duck, the goat, and the pig. And they pulled the cart into the woods. Now, the the old man, he said, first we will build a house for the duck. It'll be the easiest. So they gathered sticks and they gathered branches and they built a little house for the duck. And when it was finished, the duck took, took a look at it and said, I like it. And he went inside and he shut the door. They gathered even more sticks and branches for the goat's house. Probably three times as many sticks and branches than they had for the duck's house. And they built the house and when it was done, the goat said, I like it. And he went inside and he shut the door. Now the pig's house had to be a lot bigger and a lot stronger. So they got many, many, many more branches and sticks, maybe five times as many. They gathered them up and they built the house and the pig looked at it and he said, I like it. And what did he do? You know, he went inside and he shut the door. That's right. Now, they had to build their own house. So they gathered, oh my goodness, 12 times as many sticks and branches, and they built a nice little house for themselves. They were so tired, they went to bed and they went to sleep. And the duck went to sleep, and the goat went to sleep, and the pig went to sleep. <clears throat> now, in the morning, Coming through the woods was a wolf. He was walking through the wolf, through the woods. When he came across these houses, he said, I don't remember houses being in the woods before. He went up to the little tiny house and he poked a hole in the top and he said, oh, It's a duck. I like to eat duck. Yum, yum, yum. And the duck said, That sounds like a wolf. You go away. And the wolf said, well, I've got a mighty wind. And he blew and he blew until he blew the house down. But he didn't realize the ducks could fly and the duck flew away. So he went to the second house. He poked a hole in the second house. And he said, hmm, goat. I like to eat goat. Yum, yum, yum. And the goat said, Oh, uh, no, no, you're not going to eat goat. You sound like a wolf. You go away. And he said, I've got a mighty wind. And he blew and he blew and he blew until he blew that house down. But the goat had horns and he butted that wolf clear into the woods. That goat ran to the pig's house and the pig let him in. Well, the goat, and the goat and the pig were happy together, but the wolf came back. He tried to poke a hole in the pig's house, but it was too strong. He said, who lives in there? And the pig said, oh, I do. I'm a pig. He said, yum, yum. I like to eat pig. He said, well, you're not going to eat me. My house is too strong. Well, he said, I have a mighty wind. I could blow your house down. And he blew and blew and blew, but he couldn't blow the house down. He said to the pig, do you like potatoes? The pig said, oh, yeah. Well, he was trying to trick the pig. He said, I know where there is a field where potatoes are planted, and I'll show you. It's just over the hill. You meet me there tomorrow morning at 6.30 and we will, we will dig up some potatoes together and eat potatoes. Oh, the pig thought, yum, 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 yum. I love potatoes. But he knew that a wolf would trick him. So the next morning he got up at 5.30 
and he went to the field himself and he dug and dug and dug until he had some potatoes that he ate and he took some home. Well, the wolf didn't find the pig at the, at the garden. And so he went back to the pig's house and he said, pig, you didn't show up. He said, oh, yes, I did. I, I ate my potatoes already. Oh, dear, said the wolf. Hmm. Do you like apples? Oh, I love apples, said the pig. I know where there is a good apple tree. It's down in the valley, just a ways from here. Why don't you meet me there tomorrow morning at 6 a.m.? So the pig agreed, but he knew there would be a trick. So the next morning, he went at 5 a.m. He climbed up in that apple tree and with his little bucket, he started gathering apples. He ate a few too. Well, the wolf showed up at 5.30 before the pig could get back home. And he said, ha ha, so you went up in the tree before I got here. The pig said, yes, do you want an apple? And the wolf said, yes, I do. So he threw an apple down. I would like more apples, said the wolf. Well, open your mouth. And the pig poured the whole bucket of apples into his mouth. Well, it choked the poor wolf. And he had. A, it was a long time before that wolf ever came back to the pig's house. But the pig gathered a few more apples, put them in the bucket, and off he went home. He gave apples to the little old man. He gave apples to the little old woman. He gave apples to the goat. And the duck even came back. But the little old woman said, Oh, dear, now the little the little duck and the little goat do not have a house to live in. Well, the pig said, I have a very strong house, so why don't they just live with me? And that's what they did. And you know, they all lived happily ever after right there in the woods. The little old man and the little old woman and the duck and the goat and the pig. And the wolf never, ever, ever bothered them again. Now that's the story about the little old man, little old woman, and the duck. And I think I even have a duck here. Why, I do. Do you know? There's my little duck. Quack. This is actually a baby duck. So um, I have a big duck, but he's taking a nap right now. I hope none of you have to take a nap yet because we are going to tell more stories. The next story I'm going to tell is about a little girl named Sally Winkle. Sally Winkle was an only child. She had no pets. She lived with her mom and dad in a lovely little house with a big backyard. Sally always thought it would be nice to have a pet, but her parents never agreed to it. One day, she was helping her father in the backyard. They were planting a garden. They had planted radishes and carrots and lettuce. Oh, yummy, 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 wonderful things to eat. And right today they were digging and digging because they were going to plant some potatoes. Well, Sally had taken her little shovel and she was digging and digging and digging when clink, she hit something very hard. She reached her hand down in the dirt and she pulled out, oh, it's a gold coin. She said, Daddy, I have a gold coin. Could I go get a pet of my own now? And he said, well, all right, but you have to think about what you're going to do with the pet and how you're going to take care of it. 
She said, I will. So off to the pet store, Sally went with her gold coin. She met the owner of the pet store and she said, I would like to trade my gold coin for a dog. The pet store owner looked at that gold coin. He said, oh, yes, I will definitely trade you a gold coin for a dog. Mm -hmm. Pick out any dog you want. And so she looked around and she found a beautiful dog. It was black and brown and white. It had long ears and it was so beautiful and it had a lovely bark. Well, the pet, owner, the pet store owner even gave her a leash to take the dog home. So she walked the dog home. It was so nice. She had her own pet. When she got home, she showed her pet to her mom. She showed her pet to her dad. Her dad said, what will you do with a dog? She said, well, I'll walk him. Uh, and so she walked him, but he barked a lot. He barked and he barked and the neighbors started staring at her. So she thought, no, I can't walk him. She said, I'll put him in the backyard. So she put him in the backyard. Now, she didn't know that there were bones buried in her backyard from long, long ago. That night when she went to bed, she fell sound asleep. Her dad fell sound asleep. Her mom fell sound asleep and they snored. <laughs> The next morning, she went out in the backyard. There were holes all over the yard, even where they had planted their potatoes, even where they had radishes, even where they had carrots, and even where they had lettuce. Oh, no, her dad said, this will never do. Take the pet back. So she put the leash on the dog and she walked him back to the pet store. And the owner said, oh, you didn't like the dog? He said, he said to her and she said, I did, but he dug up our backyard. So I need a different pet. I wanted to trade him for a different pet. How about a kitty cat? The pet owner thought, Okay, a kitty cat for a gold coin. That sounds like a good deal. Pick out any cat you want. So she looked around. She looked here. She looked there. Mm. She found a big yellow cat. He purred and purred. She said, I like that one. And so he gave her the cat. She held him in her arms and she walked home. When she got home, she said, look, daddy, I have a kitty cat. He said, what are you going to do with the kitty cat? Where will you keep him? Oh, I'll keep him in the living room. And her mother said, you better be careful in my living room with a kitty cat. But she put out a pillow for the kitty cat. She put out some food for the kitty cat and some toys. And that night, the kitty cat went sound asleep. And Sally went sound asleep. And her daddy went sound asleep. And her mommy went sound asleep. And they all snored. <sighs> and the next morning when they woke up, she went in the living room and that cushion was torn apart. There were feathers everywhere. Oh my goodness. The cushions on the couch were torn apart. The, the curtains had streaks in them. Oh my goodness. Her mother came in and went, yikes, what did you do to my living room? This cat has ruined everything. Take it back to the pet store. So Sally, very sadly, gathered up that big yellow cat, walked back to the pet store and said, I have to trade for a different pet. The pet store owner said, well, what would you like? She said, I don't know. I think 
something much smaller that won't destroy our house or our yard. She said, how about, um, like a, uh, a white rat? They look nice. No, oh, he said, that would be a good choice. Pick out any one you want. So she picked out a big fat white rat and he put it in a little cage and she carried it home. When she got home, her father looked at that. Her mother went, yay, a rat. What are you going to do with that? Her father said, what are you going to do with that? She said, I don't know. I don't like it in a cage. It's all locked up. I'd rather it had a nice little place to sleep. They both said, you better be careful. So she took the rat out of the cage and she made a little bed for it under the kitchen sink. She thought that was a perfect place for a rat. It was a nice fluffy little bed and a cover over it. And she left some food, some cheese under there for the rat. And the rat went to sleep. And Sally went to sleep. And her dad went to sleep. And her mom went to sleep. And they all snored. And the next morning, Sally got up. And she went into the kitchen. But the rat was not under the sink. And then her mother came downstairs and opened the cupboard. And there was a hole in the bag of flour and flour was everywhere. And there was a hole in the bag of sugar and sugar was all over. And the cereal box was chewed open and, and the rice and the pasta and even the loaf of bread. And her mother said, yikes, what have you done? This rat has chewed into our food and we have to get rid of it now. You have to take that rat back to the store. So Sally looked and looked and looked and looked. She had to look all over for that rat and she finally found it. She picked it up. She put it in its little cage and she closed the door and she walked back sadly to the pet store. She said, the rat made a mess. I have to bring him back. The pet store owner said, well, I guess that's that. She said, no, I think I would like the dog back and maybe I could train it. He said, you can't trade a rat for a dog. No, no, no. A dog is worth much more than a rat. She said, but I gave you a gold coin. Well, that was in the beginning. Sally was very sad. She said, can I have the cat then? He said, no, no, no. She said, well, I guess I'll just give you back the rat. And she did. And she walked home very slowly, very sadly. But when she got home, her father was working in the backyard, fixing up that garden. He, was fill he had filled in those holes. He was planting more vegetables. So Sally said, I'll help you, Daddy. She got a little shovel. She started shoveling. She dug and she dug and clink. What was that? She reached down in the dirt and she pulled out a silver coin. She looked at that silver coin and she thought, hmm, should I go to the pet store? And she looked around and she thought about the dog and the cat and the rat. And she looked at that silver coin and she said, no, I'm going to the candy store. And that was exactly what she did. And you know, for that silver coin, she bought a whole bag of candy. And it was a long, long time before Sally Winkle ever had a pet. And that was the end of that. Now, I know that lots of you have pets. Maybe you have a dog, or maybe you have a cat, or maybe you have a guinea pig. 
there are so many kinds of pets in the world, and I love pets. I wonder if you can tell a story about your pet. Did your pet do something funny? Did your pet get in trouble? Did your dog dig a hole in the backyard like Sally's? Or did your cat tear up the curtains like Sally's cat? Or did you find your bag of flour with a hole in it? I don't know. But I want you to think about all the pets in the world and you think of a story of a pet. Maybe one day you can tell that story to me. Thank you for listening today to stories about pets. Oh my goodness, there are so many. And we will tell stories again someday. Have a great day. Stay healthy and stay safe. And love your pets. Bye, everybody.